Warning, I do not own images or clips in this video. This is my first video, so it might not be perfect. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey guys, welcome to the first video of this channel. So I guess you all are probably familiar to the 1998 Godzilla. But some of you probably didn't know that there was a version of the movie that was different. And it was more faithful to the original Godzilla we all really know. And I'm going to explain why this version is better than the final version we've got. This is why. First off, the design of Godzilla. Now in this section of the video, I'm going to explain why the 1994 Godzilla is better than the 1998 Godzilla by comparing them to the original design. Now, this is why I love the 1994 version. First, this is the 1954 design, a design that's been loved by all and probably the most iconic design of all time. Let's compare it to the 1954 version. Now, this is the design from the 1994 Godzilla movie, and as you can see, this design still looks like Godzilla, even though it does very interesting changes. Let's take a look at them. Now, if we take a closer look at the head, we can see some changes, like the crocodilian-like skin, how it looks, and the slit-like eyes. But we can still see some Godzilla-like traits, like the snout, the eyebrows, and the ears. And it even looks better on the side. We could see that the chin looks pronounced, the ears are small, and the slit eyes make it look more intimidating. I really do like this design. It still looks faithful to the Godzilla design, but also bringing in its own thing. So, props to that. Let's take a look at the body. Now, if we take a look at the body, we could see it's Godzilla-like, like always. It's just very different, like the arms are more longer, the feet look a little big, but overall, this body looks faithful to the original Godzilla, and I gotta say, it looks pretty awesome. So, overall, this design is sick. You can tell how much effort they put in, like the scales, the sculpting, and how it makes it look like Godzilla. And also, this is my favorite Godzilla design, so props to them. So, yeah, you can already tell how much I love this design. But let's take a look at the concept art and see what was before this design, and take a look at the really cool maquettes. Now, in this section, I want to tell you guys of someone that I'm a big fan of, and that someone is... Stan Winston. And why can't I like him? He's a really talented artist and really cool producer, and a director too. He's also a really talented artist, and the team of Stan Winston is talented too. Like, if you watch some behind the scenes footage, you can tell how much art and progression they do in their sculptures, paintings, and concept art, and that's why I really love him. And I heard that he was a really loving husband and great father. And that makes me love him even more. That knowing that he was a kind person when he was still alive makes me happy. And that it's a really shame that he's no longer with us. And his Godzilla design was never used. But hey, we can still remember the great director and artist today. Now in this first design, we can already see some differences from the final one, like how the spines look like a stegosaurus, the head looks like Hasty Godzilla, and the feet looked webbed. But this design still looks really cool. It still looks like Godzilla, but with some differences. I really like this, and props to them for making a really good design to look at. In this second rendition, and plus my favorites, this design leans more into being a dinosaur-like creature, with it having a much more dinosaur-like stance. The spines still look like Godzilla, even though they're radically different, and the head still looks like Heisei. And I guess you kind of like this. Again, this is one of my favorite concept art out of all of them. Now, when we look at this, we can see it looks more like a dinosaur, especially a T-Rex. But hey, I still think it looks like Godzilla enough to make it look cool. So, as you can see, they're trying to experiment of making them look like a dinosaur. But I still really like these designs. They look like Godzilla, but also look really cool. So, props to them. Now, in this concept art, we can already see it's kind of starting to look like the final one we were going to get, but with a few changes. No spikes at the tail, and how the head looks mildly different. But it still looks like Godzilla, and hey, it looks really cool too. So, props to them for making another design to look at. Now, these photos are really cool to look at. Like, you can see how much time and effort they put into sculpting these designs. Like, they have multiple sculptures, and it took a lot of people to sculpt these. That's why I love it, because they all work together to make this sculptor look really cool. And I gotta commend them for that. So props to Stan Winston for making this look cool. Now, in this section, I'm going to be a little bit critical. But, I have no regrets. So... This is the 1954 Godzilla, but guess what they did in the 1998 film?
film. This is what they came up with. Yep, this is what they came up with. And it looks weird, and it does not look like Godzilla at all. I don't like it, and here are some reasons why I don't like this design. I mean, look at this! The spines don't look like the traditional Godzilla. The head looks weird. The arms are too big and kind of look human-like. The legs look kind of decent it could work on a Godzilla design if done right the tail looks kind of cool but overall look at this do you think of Godzilla when you look at this I bet not at all but I do have to give a benefit of the doubt and say that I kind of like the head and the spines the spines on an original monster looks pretty cool and the head kind of looks like a really good Godzilla head if done right and a few modifications but that's all positive things I have to give to this Godzilla because overall I don't like it at all at all it looks bad not Godzilla at all but I'm not saying the concept art or maquettes are bad they look well made and well done but this is where my true anger comes from this movie because they wasted a whole lot of things that could have made this design look good or even decent like the ones you see right here in this concept art. But let's take a look at the other ones and see what they wasted. Just to keep in mind, the creature design was designed by Patrick Datopoulos. And I'm not saying he's a bad designer or even bad artist. He's really talented, as you can see in his image here. I'm just not a big fan or don't even like his design of Godzilla. That's all I'm saying. Now let's take a look at the concept art pieces. Now in this design, we can kind of see them trying to make him look kind of like Godzilla. But that's not saying much. The arm still looks weird human-like. And i just not a big fan of it. The spines are the only thing that looks like Godzilla. Now, for this one, I am kind of mixed on it. The spines look really good on a Godzilla design. Looks unique, but still traditional. But the body and everything else still looks like the design we're going to get for the movie. Not Godzilla at all. A mutated iguana, and I don't like it. I'm not a big fan, but at least the concept art looks really cool, too. Gotta commend them for that. Now, this is what ticks me off more about the concept art. We can see he's using the iconic thing Godzilla is known for. The atomic breath. He is using the atomic breath we all know him for. But guess what? Did we get that in the movie? No. All we got was this. He didn't even shoot fire out of his mouth. All he did was roar really loud and some fire came out. That is dumb. If you don't have atomic breath, why even make a Godzilla movie at all? And the other thing, they wasted perfectly well-made suits. Like this one. This thing looks well sculpted and well painted. Even though you can like see the sneakers. I'm pretty sure they already had Godzilla feet, but did we get to see this in the movie? No, they wasted these perfectly good suits that could have dated back to the original Godzilla. That kind of proves how much they wanted to stay away from the original and to not be faithful to the original thing we all know and love. But I do have a few positive things to say about it. At least the effects were decent like the cgi and the animatronic the animatronic looks great and even though the cgi at times can look really stiffy and sometimes even bad at least it looks decent enough that it's watchable so yeah you can probably tell i do not like this movie i'm not a big fan of the design or even the movie as a whole but let's take a look at our next sections and see if it actually did something good second godzilla fighting other monsters so, Godzilla fighting other monsters is a pretty classic thing all of us know him for. Like him fighting King Ghidorah, Mecha Godzilla, and other monsters. So, let's take a look at the monster he was going to fight in the 1994 version. This is the Griffin, the original monster he was going to fight in the 1994 version. And I gotta say, I really do love this design. He's monstrous, menacing, and also looks really cool too. Even his tongue is a three-headed snake. What more do you want out of it? Even his concept art looks really nice to look at. Once again, brought to life by Stan Winston himself, and I gotta say, he did an amazing job, making a monster look really creepy, monstrous, and menacing at the same time, and I gotta commend him for that. 
And I just got to say, I really do love this design. Third, marketing. Now, this section of the video is going to be pretty short because I didn't want to look for any more marketing pictures because I wanted to save on my photo gallery. But this is what the film's marketing was. Now, this was another good thing I have to say about the movie. At least the marketing was nice. Like, they didn't reveal the designs. Like, every single bus, poster, and everything else in the city had these little photos on them. But we all know how it turned out. The movie ended up being a failure and stuff. But the marketing was at least good with a lot of toys, stuff, and merch and commercials. I would recommend go checking out Monster Island Buddy's videos on that subject because his videos are informative, educational, and are really good to watch too. Final Verdict now, the script written for the 1994 version is written by Ted Rossio and Ted Elliott. And I gotta say, what I've heard, it's a really good script with great human characters, great story, awesome action sequences, and what I've heard, it actually sounds pretty good. Now, for the 1998 movie, I'm just gonna say, watch the movie for yourself and see what your own opinion on the movie is. And the 1994 script is free to read online, and that's a good thing because I really want to read it and see how good the script actually is. But yeah, basically that's it. The 1998 movie came out, everyone hated it, gave it poor reviews, and everyone immediately forgot about it. And nothing really good came out after the movie's release. Am I right, Live Action Me? Ah, we didn't get anything good about this until we got Godzilla the series on September 12th of 1998. By the way, this series is kind of awesome though. I totally agree, and this was the video on the 1998 comparison to the 1994 version, and if you actually love the original 1998 movie, that is great. This is simply just my opinion, and I just wanted to let my opinion out there, but please don't take this really seriously. If you love it, then that's great. You have your right to your own opinion, and that's the world to you. And I really know that this video is not really perfect, like how the way I talked, how everything's arranged, but I really tried to make this an enjoyable experience for you all. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. But guess what? Godzilla says, be strong and stay Godzilla fans. See ya!